Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. We have a question that came into the site, and it's from Charles M. Bowden. And Charles says, this has been bothering me for a long time. Should we be conscious of returning the right elbow to our side on the forward upswing? I have a tendency to let it get away from my body, and then I hit a pull hook. I have never seen any coverage on this situation. Thanks, Charles. Okay, let's uh, let's start by examining what some some of the basic teaching theories have been about the uh, the right elbow coming into the side for righties, and that's would be the the left elbow for somebody swinging left-handed. So or we'll call it the 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 back elbow. Many many people have said that the, the best way to to do what you're supposed to do if you come up. They want you to come here and they want you to kind of stick your right elbow into your right side. Come up and just put it in your right side. Now, as you see, if I do that and I really do that, uh, even from a vertical swing, that can really lay my club off. I mean, my club is 50% is, is skyward here. All right, which means, and, and now I, if I come in here, I'm semi-trapped. I'd be really trapped if I laid it off and I got behind, behind my, my back a little bit. But even just coming straight into, into, into my side here, that can lay off so much that the only way to get back to the ball would be what? I gotta come this way. Because if I keep trying to go to the ball that way, I'm just gonna hit the ball probably way back here at the bottom of the blade, and it's gonna go low right, just like the big, the big uh, lateral, okay? You know, I've, I've called that uh, the I've called that the uh, hosel rockets. Now it might not be a hosel rocket, but there's a good chance it'll be so much off the blade it'll feel like it and even sound like it and and hit like it. So sometimes people are not really truly hitting hosel rockets; they're hitting they hope they're hitting wide open blade blade uh, blades that go to the right, looking like them. So. The key is, is it's supposed to drop naturally. Now, again, if you're a big rotational player and you got way back in here and you try to drop your arms, you're blocked. That's what we hear the, we hear the rotational guys saying all the time. Oh, well, uh, I, I'm getting trapped back there, all right? I'm getting stuck back there. Well, the, the easiest way to not get trapped and not get stuck is don't go there. Just use a three-quarter limited turn swing. Straight back in the catcher's mitt and up the tree. Catches mitts over here as I turn to reach the toe line with the left forward arm and hand and shaft, it goes straight up. So if I come up there and I just swing it straight down, look where my elbow comes. It just comes straight down. And so when it's straight down, the club, as you're coming straight down, the club comes down and, and your arms and hands rotate the club back into the impact square. From the front view, it's right here, and it's just right there in front, and it rotates square, goes straight through. When my back arm is over the toe line, I get on this swing, on the forward swing, into the forward mitt and up the tree. It stays there. So the key is, is that, that it should be somewhat of a natural move. You can't take it and sort of speak, stick it in there. And again, if you were flat to begin with and you did that, it's even flatter coming in and you're in deep trouble and the only way to save it is to do something like that. And that'll very likely, if you come back that way and, and get your shoulder going and get the club going this way, that's going low left. And then everything in between, if you try to, you feel that and then you try to the last second pull out of the shot. So again, we come back to my plane trainer. Why did I invent the plane trainer? Well, this goes way back in the 90s when, when we had a different type of problem than teaching people. Way back in the 90s, everybody was taught that, that if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're coming outside in, the answer to outside in is to swing more inside out. So they would stand here and people would just come in and just take their right elbow and they'd just go like this, using this side of the mat here. They'd just, instead of swinging straight back, because they were going outside in, they said, take it inside and swing out. Well. Come on, folks, anybody who's played any other sport, like even a baseball bat, if you swing a baseball bat out, it's going right. Definitely a tennis racket, a ping pong paddle, anything. If you swing inside to out, the ball's going out there, right? So if I'm facing here and I'm, I'm swinging inside out and opening up my hands, the ball's going out there. All right, I come from inside and swing out there. Whether I throw it or hit it, it's going out there. The only way it goes straight is, is to throw straight at your target. Straight back, straight through. Underhanded, overhanded, or whatever. So. I had to combat the inside swing. So I created the train trainer so that from back here they couldn't pull their arm back inside. All right, so if you make the, if you hit the plane trainer and you put it on and you can hit golf balls with it on, you put it on, your arms, it's gonna keep your arm in front. Your arm should come off it a little bit because we're going vertical. It should drop right back on it. And when it drops right back on it, 
the plane train it basically kind of pushes it right off and, and it helps you accelerate up into the finish and you finish straight and, and square to the target and level so you get the plane train to level and you can see it facing the target today most most rotational players would have would have their right shoulder and the plane train are pretty close to looking at the target so that that still works today because it keeps your arms in front of you that comes right down and after it comes down your arm slides across the, a plane trainer a little bit both arms are on it and and slides up and the beauty about it is because your arms are touching it you're getting the feedback of where they are and you can hit balls with the plane trainer we always recommend you wear it real high for the practice swings but you can't really quite wear it this high to hit it because it kind of arches your arms up too much and, and your arms are in the wrong dynamic position. They arch too much and all the upper muscles are activated instead of them hanging properly where, where your, your lifter muscles are all the underarm muscles that when you squeeze your last three fingers on both hands, you see these muscle groups activate. So you lower it down a little bit to just about, just about below the stern, uh, the center of your chest. And then you can stand here and you can hit golf balls with it. Bullseye. So the key is you don't ever want to force the right elbow into the into the hip. All you want to do is in the in the in the vertical peak performance swing, just lift it straight up over the toe line and drop straight down. And when it drops straight down, it just goes, it's right in front of your body to be swung straight back up in the forward up swing to the T finish. Okay, so it's a natural event just like skipping a rock on a lake. That's that applies for it all the time because you're not gonna try to jam your elbow to skip a rock because it'll very likely open up your hand way to the right for a right-hander, okay? It's just a natural move. Straight up, straight down, and straight in front. We swing in front of our body. The three-quarter limited turn, peak performance golf swing. Well, that's it for the search for today on explaining, explaining how we use the back, the right arm or the back arm in the swing. Keep it natural. That's it for search. See you later. And I'll be talking to you again soon.